So you may not realize this, but there are trillions, yes, trillions of bacteria interacting inside your gut to make changes that you may not be aware of. In today's video, we'll discuss exactly how your gut microbiome affects your health. And at the very end of the video, I'll explain five tips I recommend to improve your gut microbiome so you can improve your health as well. Guys, let's talk about poop. Hi y'all, Dr. Islam here, AK, your poop guru and gut microbiome expert. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist trained at the Mayo Clinic. Come see us up at Gastro for all your GI needs and consider subscribing. So what exactly is the gut microbiome? Great question. I'm so glad I asked myself this question. Well, the gut microbiome is a collection of bacteria, viruses, and fungi that are constantly interacting inside your GI tract. Now we're getting more and more information about the benefits and sometimes the detriments of your gut microbiome and actually how it affects your gut. But what we think is going on is that you have these bacteria, mainly bacteria that are interacting with your environment, with your food, and can also influence your health. And we've seen actually whenever you develop more bad bacteria, that can cause a lot of health problems to occur. Now constantly in your gut microbiome, this ecosystem you have good bacteria and you have bad bacteria and there's a constant interaction between the two now for a lot of people the good bacteria ends up being the predominant player in your gut microbiome so because of that you may not have a lot of issues going on inside your GI tract but sometimes the bad bacteria can overwhelm the good bacteria to cause a lot of health issues, mainly in the gut, but also things outside the GI tract as well. So our goal is to do what we can to promote good bacteria, but not only that, you want a diversity of bacteria inside your gut that can hopefully interact on a healthy basis of what's going on based on what you eat, your environment, and also what's going on inside your brain as well. Now in terms of the health issues that we know that the gut bacteria can influence, we know there are GI issues and there are non-GI health problems as well. With respect to the GI issues, we know that the gut microbiome plays a role when it comes to IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. Studies have shown that those individuals that have IBS a good percentage of them not only have bad bacteria, they have a minimal diversity of their bacteria going on inside your GI tract. And what we think is going on is that that can manifest a lot of health issues, gut issues, symptoms like bloating, pain, diarrhea, and constipation as well. We know that the gut bacteria also influences a condition called IBD or inflammatory bowel disease, mainly Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And we have seen studies suggesting that if we can alter the gut microbiome, in our patients who have this condition, it can really change the course of the disease, making them more responsive to the treatment, and actually can, in some individuals, reverse the course of inflammatory bowel disease. And we're also seeing studies of how the gut microbiome can also influence other conditions inside the gut, like GERD, nausea, gastroparesis, cirrhosis, heartburn, even small bowel diseases as well. Now, a lot of gastroenterologists, including yours truly, really does believe that the heart of a lot of gut issues really comes down to what is going on inside your gut microbiome is the foundation for a lot of health problems going on. But you know how I mentioned that there are also non-GI symptoms or health issues that are occurring. Let's talk about those in particular. So once again, the field is new and so we don't have a lot of good information for this. And sometimes the studies are not the best studies that we want. But so far what we've seen is that the gut microbiome can also affect other diseases outside the gut. So for example, psoriasis. We've seen conditions in which skin diseases like psoriasis can be influenced on what's going on inside the gut microbiome. And other skin conditions can also include acne. But there are also other autoimmune diseases that we're seeing can affect the gut microbiome. Things like scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's. And the list can go on and on and on. Now, because it's such a new field, we don't know exactly the role that the gut microbiome can play when it comes to these particular non-GI issues. This video is sponsored by Lubbock Gastroenterology. This is my GI clinic based in Lubbock, Texas. Our passion is to give our patients the best comprehensive care in this area. And we try to focus what we can to do things naturally, whether it's a functional medicine approach, a natural approach or ways that we can tailor medicine to make you feel better. So if you want to see us at Lubbock Gastroenterology for all your GI needs, call this number or contact us through our website. We can schedule you today to get your GI track back on track. 
So now that we talked about exactly how the gut microbiome can affect your health, let's talk about the goals of what we want to do when it comes to improving your gut microbiome. So the mantras when it comes to your gut microbiome or your gut system, your ecosystem, is that you want diversity and you want a good amount of good bacteria. That is the overall goal that we're trying to achieve whenever we're trying to improve the gut microbiome. And what we have seen is that those two critical things are what is necessary to improve your gut, but also improve your health as well. So all the things that we're trying to do, whether it's adding foods, eliminating foods, is to do those two main things. Improve the diversity of your gut microbiome, but also improve the good bacteria as well. So let's talk about the practical tips that you can do today to improve your gut microbiome. And there are five things that I recommend. Number one, the foundation for everything is to have fiber as the basis for what you need to do to improve your gut health. Fiber is the key when it comes to improving your gut microbiome. It is literally the secret sauce that you need to help feeling and making your gut better. Studies after studies after studies have suggested that improving your fiber content can dramatically change how your gut ecosystem is. And also the less fiber that you have, the more difficult it can be to improve your gut. So a couple of things I recommend. So number one, when it comes to fiber, always go low and go slow. Some people sometimes have an adverse response to so much fiber. It's not that you're allergic to fiber or that you can't take it. The idea is that your gut microbiome is so out of whack that it doesn't have a chance to adapt to the amount of fiber that's going on inside your gut. So add fiber and go low and go slow when it comes to fiber. Tip number two is that you need to improve the diversity of your gut microbiome. And the number one way to do that is to have a wide variety of plants in your diet. Yes, I know, but plants are the source for you to improve that diversity to help your gut microbiome. Now, it's not any particular plants. Take the plants that you like, but the more diverse plants that you have, and the more plants that you add to your diet, this will give you the antioxidants, the minerals, and the fiber that you need to get your gut taken care of. Number three, consider adding probiotics. So, so probiotics are supplements that you can add in that it can help improve what's already going on inside your gut. So what I always say with probiotics is that it's not a miracle drug. So don't expect a complete change for this. If you don't change the basis, a probiotic may not help, but it adds reinforcement to what's going on inside your gut to improve your health. Now, when it comes to probiotics, keep in mind, they are not FDA regulated, meaning it, there are a lot of them that are out there, so kind of be careful and talk to your healthcare provider about which one to take and kind of what particular strand you should do. But always keep in mind that these are things that are not regulated, so you have to always be careful when it comes to this, but consider adding that to help out your gut microbiome. Number four, eliminate some of the triggers that can destroy your gut. These include things like alcohol, smoking, processed foods. These are the things that can destroy your gut. So you can do everything right, but you don't wanna add things that are bad. So if you can minimize those or eliminate those things, that's gonna help improve your gut microbiome. And then lastly, may sound weird, but improve what's going on inside your brain. There is a thing called the brain-gut axis, and this is a direct connection between your brain and your gut. And so what affects here can affect what's going on inside your gut. And this is why when my patients who are stressed, they can manifest that in a lot of gut issues, pain, bloating, distension, diarrhea. Have you ever noticed butterflies in your stomach whenever you're nervous? That is the brain gut connection. And sometimes treating what's going on here can help what's going on inside your GI tract as well. Here's my call to action to you. If you're worried about your gut, try to implement one of these things to help improve your GI tract to get you feeling better and get you on the right track. I want you to try one thing per week to make that slow shift from a maybe an okay gut microbiome to the best microbiome out there. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, come see us at Gastro for all your GI needs. And thank you for watching. Don't forget, let's talk about poop. Thanks, everybody.